All right, so I'm not sure. Can you all hear me? <laughs> Let's see. All right. Oh, there's an echo. Shoot. How about now? Is the echo still there, or have I fixed that? <laughs> The joys of doing this for the first time and just going ahead and doing it live, you know. Good. Great. Yeah, this is my first uh, live stream using Twitch or Streamlabs or OBS or whatever. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let me know if things are are good. Um, I'm basically just going to sit here, chat, and we're, we're going to do some fashion illustrations. So um, I hope that you all enjoy it. Um, feel free to ask questions in the chat. I am taking a look at them. Uh, there is a little bit of latency, I believe. My internet connection is not great. Um, that's something that I'd like to change eventually, but right now I'm making do with what I've got. So um, yeah, so welcome, welcome to my first stream. Thank you for stopping by. I'm Benjamin Crudwig. I am the... Um, the the owner of this account and <laughs> I own Benjamin Collin fashion design so I do fashion on a one-of-a-kind basis for the most part and I had a fashion show last year the one that I had this year was canceled due to coronavirus so I've been doing a little bit of restructuring and rejiggering however um, what I have been doing recently is more sketching because I am planning another fashion show. So um, I found that a couple of years ago I did Inktober and that was during the month of October where you do a sketch every single day and um, it, you are given a prompt. So I found that that really helped me with my creative juices and it also gave me a lot of ideas that I could have in the bank for when I wanted to create something new later on. And that was actually really, really helpful for me before when I was um, preparing for my fashion show at the Raw Artists Denver show. I was able to pull quite a few sketches that were already done um, within a certain kind of scheme, and I was able to just work. So what I'm doing now is for the last few days, I've been doing fashion sketches based on bugs, you know, creepy crawlies, and I know that's not everybody's favorite thing. Um, however, for a long time when I was a kid, I wanted to be an entomologist. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I was obsessed with bugs um, of all, all varieties. So that's what I've been doing. I'm doing fashion illustrations that are based off of different bugs. And what I'll do first is show you what I've done so this piece right here is a fashion illustration I did a few days ago based on a butterfly. It was a white spotted butterfly. And this is actually going to be part of one of my sewing challenges, which is the three fabric challenge. Now, um, the three fabric challenge, I've picked three different fabrics based on random number generators to create a piece out of. So this will be made out of um, black velvet, and then a blue silk chiffon underlaid with a gradient silk chiffon that goes from a white to a black. Um, so that's this baby here. And then the one that I finished yesterday is a rhinoceros beetle, and you can ignore the fact that I spelled 
rhinoceros wrong on this one. <laughs> um, I noticed that after after I had already finished it and posted it. So, c'est la vie. So this one is based off of a rhinoceros beetle, which looks like this. And you can see all the little bits and bobs attached to it. And I used the color palette from the beetle, which is what I'm doing with all of these creatures. And also this one, I directly referenced it with the headpiece and the shoulder pieces. So um, I'm trying to use all these references, some as a more metaphorical reference and some as a very literal reference. And today, um, I have a couple queued up just in case we do go for an hour. Um, again, let me know uh, if, if the connection is really bad. <laughs> um, if it is bad, I will end it. But um, at this point, I think we're okay. I am using Procreate on my iPad to do these sketches. And um, I am by no means an expert on Procreate. However, um, I've been I've been learning as much as I can. Um, the other thing that I'm using, you'll notice that I have a what's called a croquis um, down below here, and that is essentially a a line art of a person. Um, I got these from Fashionary, and this is poses for fashion illustration. It's a fantastic resource. I used to sketch all of my own croquis by hand. Um, I found that they're just kind of exhausting to do over and over and over again if you don't have something to then sketch over. Um, and I'm trying to be as efficient as possible and spend my time on the creative aspects of fashion illustration. So this resource is great. Um, I do have, when I do them by hand with my art supplies, I use a light table and put this underneath whatever I'm drawing on. So, all right, it looks like we have um, Hello Peach and Adventurer's Pack. Hello, hello, hello. Um, for any of you who might also know, um, Adventurer's Pack is a channel here on Twitch as well, and they do a D&D &D live stream Friday evenings. So in just about three hours, they'll be doing episode three of The Gauntlet, um, and you can hang out. I'm a mod there, so you can also hang out with me. <laughs> um, I, I'm timing this so it doesn't overlap with the Adventurers pack. It's just something I get to do beforehand. Um, so anyways, the um, <laughs> the sketch that I'm... So the, the fashion illustration poses um, come in a few different flavors. So there's um, basic, casual, freedom, glamour, confidence, athletic, and then there's dramatic, lounging, maternity, plus size, and portrait. And so I will be... Oh, hi, Wakaba42. I wasn't sure if you, you left or not. Um, so I'm new to all of this stuff. It's kind of fun. So um, yeah, so I'm using a casual pose. I kind of thought that this bug, which is called the green lacewing, would, would be good for what I would call a, a casual pose. I'm actually going to go ahead and pop to this. So the green lacewing is a bug that a lot of people are probably familiar with that you'll see in the late spring to summer. And these are mostly a North American bug. Um, they're, I think they're cute. <laughs> you know, not everybody does, but they're this lovely spring green with the most delicate wings. Um, they are transparent. They don't, they don't look like there's anything in between there, um, but there is a clear transparent layer on the wings. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to fly. Um, you can usually see these in weeds or tall grass flying around, and um, they are, they're helpful bugs, so they eat aphids. Um, you didn't know that this was going to be educational, too, <laughs> but it is. So we're going to work on this one first today, and um, what I like to do first is I'm going to go to my layer screen, and I am going to adjust the opacity of this bottom screen first. Um, this helps me 
I'm going to sketch over this eventually, um, but this is less bothersome to my eye. So I'm going to keep that there. And then um, for now, I'm actually going to hide the bug layer. And I have a new layer here. And I like to use the technical pen brush on Procreate or the fine tip pen. Uh, the technical pen has a little bit more, you can change the thickness of it by the pressure. So that's what I'm, I'm really into it. Um, so what I like to do first is just outline the important lines on here. And I try to be as stable as possible. Um, and of course, there's usually lots of editing that goes into this where I just delete stuff. <laughs> um, but I find that, you know, I need to get one of those like wrist guards or hand guards that prevent me from my hand attacking things. So I try to do as few strokes as possible on a single line. Because otherwise it looks like this, you know, like you start doing that. Um, and I find that that's just really not great looking. So that's why I try to do one line. And if I kind of wiggle out in a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Most of this is going to get covered anyway. Um, and so then even here, I like to do a slight outline of the chest area um, because what that does, it allows me to see how the fabric falls on the body. And that's really important when you're working with something like sheer or flowing. And also just to let you know, it's really warm in LA right now. <laughs> so um, my hands are a little bit sticky and are causing me to have a little bit extra, geez, some extra drag that I don't love. And honestly, I would do some music right now, but I f fear that that would interfere with my frame rate. Um, I know OBS and Streamlabs is pretty smart when it comes to working on latency, but I'm not. So uh, yeah, we're just not going to do music on this episode. It can just be us chit-chatting and talking about things. So how's everyone doing right now on this Friday afternoon? Looks like I accidentally gave her a little bit of a, a goatee, which is fine. There we go. We're just going to soften that chin a little bit. Great. So, um, yeah, it looks like you're getting tech set up. Of course you are. Don't want you to pass out for your live stream later. Um, I'm also happy it's Friday. I actually just got two, two new gigs um, for my freelance marketing and... It's like, oh, I actually I actually have to work now. Um, it's been a while. <laughs> All right, so once I've gotten the um, croquis sketched off, then I hide the other layer. Um, and I'm actually going to bring up the green lacewing again and take a look at the forms. So you'll notice here, um, again, the color palette is very, very simple. It's going to be more of a spring green. Um, the eyes have 
a little bit of like a red tint to it. Um, I heard in the book and on descriptions online that they can be coppery or bronzy. So I think that's a really interesting idea to maybe bring in as some details. Um, and then of course the thing that's going to be the biggest draw for me is the, the wings itself. There's going to be a lot of delicacy here. Um, also, if you can't tell, I do live in LA and there's a lot of honking <laughs> usually. So if you hear that, I'm sorry. And if you don't, ignore me. Um, yeah, so again, the wings are going to be really important in this design. There's a lot of roundness to this one. So I'm thinking that I'm going to want a softer piece. So you might have looked at the rhinoceros beetle that I just did and see it's a little bit more angular. So I am kind of going the complete opposite on this one. I want to go really flowy, very delicate and soft. So I want to do a new layer um, because I don't want to draw on the croquis itself. It's just not really, um, it's not very good looking. Um, so what I think I'm gonna do with this one, um, because I wanna play with the transparency of the wings of this bug. I'm gonna create kind of like a bodysuit underneath and then do an overlay cage skirt, essentially. Um, so I'm gonna start basically creating, you know, a bodysuit here. And we'll do this. I really liked this particular pose because it's very contemplative and um, soft looking. So that way it, it'll match with the bug itself. Um, so again, I wanna show you what happens now. <laughs> um, so if I take away the croquis itself, you just see the line art for the garment. Um, and you'll notice that it's just a couple of lines. Um, and that's, you know, that'll be fine for a little bit. Um, but once I start moving into the fill and the colors, I'm actually going to need to make sure that those are fully, um, what I would say fully linked together. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to my croquis layer and hit the open capacity down so I can still see the shape and but then I know what lines I've already gone over and which ones I haven't also if none of this is interesting to you let me know <laughs> um, I'm happy to not explain everything that I'm doing but wrong layer there we go And again, since this is a bodysuit, it is going to be right up against her skin. All right. Make sure we do that. And so I think what I'm going to do with this one is really work on fluidity. So I'm going to just create that and bring that around. So I'm kind of thinking that this is gathering the material kind of up around her waist. And I'll come down and just make sure, you know, that all these lines connect. Great. 
So even though the wings on this bug are fully transparent, what I will do is drop a solid color and then bring the opacity down quite a bit. Um, however, first I want to do the bodysuit color. So I'm just going to pick color. Oops. See, that's what happens when you don't have a solid line. And that, I see where that is. Okay. Cool. Um, and luckily I can just pop back in and grab that color. So yeah, our bodysuit is going to be this really vivid green here. <laughs> not yet. I'm not ready to do that yet. All right. <laughs> when does the ASMR start? I could really start right now if I wanted to and just whisper at you for a long time. Okay. Great. And actually, realizing what I just did, I'm going to undo all of that because I actually need to do a different layer. Um, and I'm going to set this layer as my reference layer. And what that means is anything above this layer, like directly above this layer, should, and I'm saying that with a big should, yeah, should basically snap to the line art below, except that was the wrong layer. Let's try that again and double check. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so you see that it, it snaps to the line art below. We'll actually flip those two layers at one point. Um, that way the line art does stay on top of this, the, the background. Um, but what this allows me to do is do shading if I need to um, without ruining the line art of the actual garment. All right, so you can see that it looks like it's kind of getting whoops, rid of all of that stuff here. Um, and it kind of is, but Again, once we flip the layers around, you'll see um, the actual line art will be above everything. Okay, so I'm actually going to do another new layer because what I'm looking for, I'm gonna do my opacity, um, well, I'll have to do that in a second. Because this is so transparent on this side, I, I want to do a, a literal transparent layer and this is something that when I do conventional art materials, it's very difficult for me to accomplish um, because a lot of art materials are opaque in nature. I use Copic markers quite a bit and colored pencils. And so those, you know, Copic markers are less opaque than colored pencils. However, some of them still have a little bit too much intensity. The other bonus of this is that I can literally just color pick whatever color I need from my reference photo. And, and throw it down. So we are going to figure out why that did that. Okay. My guess is that it's down here. It's not quite enough of a solid thing. So what I just did there was I changed the limit of what gets filled. Okay. 
great. And now what I can do with this layer is drop the opacity almost like all the way. So you can see how much that has changed. So you can also still see the outline of the legs, which is great. Um, and what that'll do is as long as we keep the clothing on the top, which we should, um, the, the color of the legs will come through as well by just a little bit. And then what I'm going to do on these, so I do have the black line art on this layer. Um, however, I am going to add yet another layer right above this layer. And I'm going to just darken just a teeny tiny bit um, because I want you to be able to see I'm going to create basically this lovely little bit of filigreeing that you can see in the wings of this insect. And I do want to mention um, this bug was recommended by my mother. So um, Vicky, I don't know if you're watching. Um, maybe not. I think, I don't know if she knows how to use Twitch yet. Um, I'll train her and, and then she can she can come hang out. <laughs> we can have mama in the house. Um, so she she did give me the inspiration for this one. So this one is for you, Ma. <laughs> All right. So I think what I am gonna do is actually hide this top layer. Um, that way I can better see what I'm working on. Now, one thing that I've had to learn with my fashion sketching is that, oh, hello, Emmy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so what I've had to learn with my own fashion sketching, which was, for me, is a very difficult lesson to learn, is that it's not about being perfect. It's about getting the feel of the garment and what you're trying to convey. And I'm, oops, I see what I'm doing there. Um, I'm a person who's definitely a little bit of a control freak. Um, I also am a little bit of a perfectionist. And so for me, it's very difficult to let go of that control and just let, let it go. Yeah, a praying mantis would be cool. Um, I'll put that on my, my list. Maybe I'll do that for next Friday's um, live stream. So I am going to do this every Friday at 2. So let me know if you enjoy this because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do it if people don't like it. But it is something that I enjoy doing and I'm going to be doing it anyway. So I figured we can hang out and chat. So Miss Watkins, how are, how are you doing today? Yeah, and so when I'm doing these, not all of them are going to necessarily be um, literal translations. <laughs> so, well, I'm, oh, of course that's what happens. Um, oh. <laughs> I hate when I do that. When I just, my, because my palm is resting on my iPad, 
Grr. Um, sometimes I just do streaks, so. Yes, I'm so excited that you're going to stream later. I, I, I'm pretty sure that they saw, but I sent them an email, you guys an email, with the stats from the last two games of the gauntlet, so. Um, <laughs> some fun stuff in there. Okay, so like I was saying, um, not all of these bugs are going to have a literal translation. Um, I am using motifs from the bugs themselves and color palettes. However, I am definitely going to try to branch out not just doing things, like, literally. Um, the Rhinoceros Beetle, again, was kind of an exception to that. I really wanted to go with with the shapes of the rhinoceros beetle, that's usually what's most iconic of those. Um, and then I also, you know, I chose the color palette from the bug itself. And because it's a beetle with that hard carapace on the outside, but it also had these really beautiful, um, so the, the wings of a beetle are called the elytra or elytra. I'm not sure what the pronunciation is. Um, however, those had a beautiful like amber color. So, I wanted to use all of those, but I figured because the beetle is so hard, like has a hard exterior and has a sheen, I chose to do like a leather, leather jacket. So, um, oh, and there's, there's my mom, Vicki Lee. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Everyone say hi to my mom. <laughs> I'm such a mama's boy. Uh, you know, don't worry. <laughs> um, I am hoping to do a couple of, of bugs today, so... Um, I already have the second one picked out, just especially because this one is a little bit simple with the color palette and what I'm doing here. I'm just creating the details of the wings that are on the body. And, you know, I really enjoy just experimenting with the, the strokes of this pen. Um, and you'll probably see me switch up some stuff in a little bit when I start doing shading. It looks like a uh, Black Widow. Yeah, I'd love to do a Black Widow. Um, I'm a sucker for anything kind of gothy. So while I'll... <laughs> that, that, one, that one will be a fun one. Um, maybe I can do a little bit of an like assassin. I know that's kind of overplayed, maybe. Um, oh, my mom's even using emojis on here. I'm so proud. <laughs> So a while ago, um, I was working on doing some stuff for my um, laser cutter, and I wanted to do a leaf, ske leaf skeleton, and I don't know how many thousands of these lines I made to try to accomplish it, and then I did a test print, and it was too detailed. <laughs> so um, it ended up singeing some of it a little bit, and I had to turn off the, the Glowforge. Um, nothing actually burned, but, you know, when you're cutting paper, it does singe it, and, um, you know, it just, I don't want to cause any damage or smoke to, to anything, and I don't want to burn down my apartment, so, you know, safety first. So the question, on the actual garment, how would I accomplish those lines um, to mimic the wings? Um, so that's a good question. Um, for something like this, because I'd probably use a silk chiffon for the actual, um, I don't know what to call this, uh, panels of the skirt, what I would probably do is either do some embroidery, like some machine embroidery um, using a stabilizer and sketching out using like a washable fabric marker and sketching out this entire process and then doing machine embroidery 
on top of that and then wash out that interfacing. Um, that's one common way to do it. There's also another embroidery technique that I've been learning um, how to do and you use basically a mesh. Um, as your underlayment. So this the chiffon should work there, but you use a teeny, teeny, tiny crochet hook and some thread. Um, and what that will do is um, you then basically, it's not latch hook, but you, you crochet the pieces onto the mesh and bada bing, bada boom. You, you've got some I don't like how that one turned out. Um, you've got those lines. The other way that you could do it is get like a jersey. And then um, there's a technique called burnout. And I don't think you literally burn it out. I believe it is actually a chemical process. Well, so it's a chemical burn <laughs> rather than um, uh, like a flame or anything. Um, so, yeah. Ooh, yeah, that's looking good. Um, if I do say so myself. Uh, what was I talking about? I just distracted myself with how that looks. Uh, <laughs> oh, so basically what happens with a burnout jersey is the um, there's parts that are a little bit more transparent than the others. So that's, yeah, I don't, I don't know. You've, you've probably seen shirts like that before. Um, but I really want the, the flow of chiffon in this one. Uh, one thing I will mention is just because I'm sketching all of these doesn't necessarily mean that I will be making all of them in real life. The spotted butterfly one, I will be making that one for real. Like that, that one will happen. And I'm thinking I might do... If people are interested, I might do live sewing days too. So maybe early in the week, uh, do a live stream of you watching me sew. If that is something that sounds interesting. What about tie and dye? Yeah, to you could do a tie dye effect. You could just dye it in general using a more opaque fabric dye. So that's something I can do hand painting on the fabric. And it's basically, it's just as much work as any of the other techniques that I mentioned. It might actually be less work um, than, than anything else. Ooh, a golden orb weaver. Oh, I love those. I'm gonna have to make sure I watch the playback of this and write down which ones, <laughs> which ones I want to to come back and do, because um, the Black Widow definitely, the Golden Orb Weaver, is fantastic. So you can tell I'm not really doing any rhyme or reason with these shapes. I'm just trying to do some more organic branches and stuff. Again, I'm just trying to get the feel of the garment. It doesn't need to be picture perfect. And that's something that I struggled with for so long early on in my fashion career, um, where I wanted, I wanted the sketch to look just like the final garment. And a lot of the, unfortunately, a lot of the fabrics that I design are extremely detailed. So I could never properly render the fabric. <laughs> and that was so frustrating for me. Um, so I finally had to have a little talk with myself and say, it's okay if it's not perfect. It is a-okay. <laughs> Just make sure that you're getting the vibe of the garment down. Um, with my, my ability now to do more digital work, I can actually, if I wanted to, download the fabric designs that I have created and use them as an overlay and then design based off of that. So I do have that capability now um, as opposed to trying to hand draw and hand render everything. So.
Remember when I said that this wasn't going to take a long time? Because it's just green. <laughs> uh, one thing that I love about Procreate, um, and no, I am not, I am not sponsored by Procreate, but hey, you know, if they want to, that'd be awesome. Um, Holler, holler at your boy over here. I love that sweet, sweet Procreate money. Um, so yeah, um, the detail work is incredibly important for anything that's monochromatic. Um, you know, especially if you are planning on doing anything for sale or uh, if you're going to do something that's meant for magazine work, so editorial anything editorial, you want to make sure that the details are striking. Um, especially with editorial, you're usually getting a far away shot of the garment. And unfortunately, um, you're not going to necessarily be able to see everything in great detail. So you want to make sure that's really, really striking. This would be probably more of a piece for maybe an alternative wedding, or maybe it's a costume, ballet. It, you know, it could really go for anything. Um, I'm probably going to do something up on the top. I uh, haven't quite decided yet what I want to do, um, but we will get there. So you can see I kind of got outside the lines right there. I can go back and erase that. That won't be a problem. So one thing, I'll, I'll do another shout out for my mom. Um, she is where I get a lot of my artistic prowess from. Um, that side of my family is pretty much all artists in one form or another, whether it's photography, uh, oil painting, watercolor painting, collage, um, acrylic painting, music. There's a lot of musicians on that side of my family, uh, music teachers specifically. Um, so, uh, it's been a long time since we've all been able to get together for like a family, family get together or family art show, but that's something that we all would bring our own mediums and look forward to every summer. But I'm very, very lucky that I had a mom or have a mom who is extremely supportive of my artistic work. And I can't tell you how much I learned growing up. Um, that put me light years ahead of other folks in my art classes. <laughs> like, we were talking about composition and stuff when I was a wee lad, so... It's, it's served me well over the years. Yeah, this would be really fun to do um, this fabric to have actually a little bit of a shine. So while silk chiffon, oh, that was a weird accent, while silk chiffon um, doesn't have a lot of shimmer to it, organza does. So even though organza is a little bit more stiff, you could definitely do that. Or I could even, you know, spray it with a shimmer spray. I would want to make sure that I didn't go too costumey. Yeah, there we go. So doing what I just did, by like those long strokes there, A, it adds another fluidity to it, but it helps me break up the space so I can better see where I need to put these cells, essentially. Does anybody have any awesome plans for the weekend coming up?
I know tonight I am I'm again modding for the gauntlet over on the Adventurers Pack channel, which I am super, 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 super excited for. Um, it's it's one of the highlights of my week. Um, and then other than that, I'm going to keep sketching and do some, uh, probably do some sewing on my dress. I haven't gotten any work on that done yet. Um, you know, job interviews kind of interfered with that, and I am okay with that kind of interference. <laughs> I've been out of work for a few months now since COVID has taken over. Um, that being said, I have been very, very busy. You know, I do have... Um... <laughs> Sorry, Snake Patrol and Wine. <laughs> I like it. You you definitely need one after the other. Um, yeah, my parents had a bull snake show up on their front door this week. And about four feet long, I believe. Um, right at their front door trying to get to a mama, Robin, and her babies. And my, my brave father attacked it first and, and tried to get it away. And, uh, and by attack, I mean relocate. They didn't hurt it. Um, <laughs> and then uh, it came back after they put down some stuff that's supposed to, like, get rid of them, like peppermint oil and garlic and all of this stuff. And it came back, and then my mom took care of it, which I can just imagine how that, how that went. <laughs> uh Yeah, I love this color too. I mean, um, it's stunning. It kind of, I'm going to hate myself when I say this. It kind of reminds me of Tinkerbell, um, the color of her outfit. And now I'm like, crap, am I just making a Tinkerbell outfit, but like make it fashion? Oh, well, if that's, you know, all fashion is referential. And sometimes you can't help it. I wasn't even thinking about Tinkerbell, but now that I see this color, all I need to do is just not add any yellow anywhere, <laughs> and I'll be fine. Um, I could I could make a template in my Glowforge and stencil um, some gold fabric paint. That would be really, really easy for me to do. Um, I am limited on the stencil size. My Glowforge can only cut stuff out in an 11 by 19 format. So, um, you know, I'd, I'd have to figure out something that is tile 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 oy vey. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I could figure something like that out. I'm not gonna lie, I'm, this is so pretty. Um, sometimes I'm not always very happy with a sketch and I just get a little like, ugh. That's not so good, but I'm really liking this so far. And I know I'm kind of like changing my style up every now and again, um, but that's okay. Oops. So one of the things I love about Procreate is that I can change my canvas direction any any which way I want. <laughs> so I can just be like, oh, I need to do this now. Um, I, I need to come in here and then like do that. It's It's great. Looks like, no. Which layer is that on? Nope. Is it this layer? Yep. Don't mind me, just finding, finding little bits and bobs. Oh, Scott, you're gonna be doing some sketching of my own crate and some laundry. Super fun, super exciting. It's my favorite thing to do. I'm just lucky that I got my thing done. All right, see ya, see ya, Emmy. Thanks for dropping by. I know you guys have only about two hours until the stream, so. The gauntlet. And the cool thing about using Procreate too is that I have the ability to do a uh, time lapse. 
it just automatically records every step that I'm doing and I can output it to a short little time lapse. So that's what I've been posting on my Instagram, which if you want to follow me, it's instagram.com slash Benjamin underscore Colin. Um, you are welcome to come over, see what I'm working on. I haven't been posting a whole lot on there because I've been just a little reserved lately. Um, you know, with everything going on in the world, I, I'm really watching my social media intake and I also work on, gosh, I don't know how many social media accounts I have, but for my various businesses, my personal accounts. So I've been doing a lot more on Lachlan's Loot Library, which is my new business, which is doing the Character Chronicle, which is for um, TTRPG or tabletop role-playing game aficionados, uh, things like D&D, Pathfinder, um, pretty much anything that you have a character mini and dice that you need to store. And it's also good storage for other things. Um, like, I, I'm definitely going to make a mending box with one of them. Um, I want one for my abstract. Oh, so, Mom, this is for... This is called Procreate. It's an iPad app. And um, so it's not something that you can use elsewhere. However, if you have an iPhone or iPad, you can download an app called Hyperlapse. And then what you do is put it on a tripod. I was trying to think of the word for that. Um, I still have coronavirus brain where it's just like, it's been too long since I've spoken to people. Um, but Hyperlapse, you can put your thing on a tripod and you can film what you're doing, and that will also create a time lapse. So that's something that I would recommend for you. Um, so Procreate on the iPad is essentially, it's an app that I'm drawing on right now. So it's the, the time lapse is actually in the app. So if you were going to do some digital art, you could, you could use Procreate. Um, and that's P-R-O-C-R-E-A-T. Um, I'm loving the interface of this. I've used some Adobe products recently um, just to test it out. I don't like their function as much as I like the function of Procreate. So um, yeah, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather use this. Um, it's, you know, a little bit of a pricey app initially, but I've gotten plenty of use out of it and I use it pretty much every day. Yeah, so the Hyperlapse is the app that I use um, when I'm sewing, and I do the, the time lapses of that because, you know, I'm, I'm taking video. And it's much easier to use that than filming and then changing the speed in, like, iMovie. So that's one of the things that I've, you know, adopted using. <laughs> is a lot of iMovie um, for some of my videos, which normally on Fridays I do a Seeds of Creativity video, um, but with the, the new gigs that I've gotten recently, I just needed to focus on those a little bit. However, there will be a new Seeds of Creativity on my YouTube channel next Friday, so I'll make sure that I get that filmed on Thursday. That way I can chit-chat about creativity and different aspects of creativity that we might struggle with or benefit from. Next week, we are going to be talking about burnout. I think that's actually a very topical thing to talk about um, recently. There's a lot of things to be burnt out about, so I'm happy to discuss self-care options and ways to help prevent burnout. So I'll talk about that next Friday in Seeds of Creativity over on my YouTube channel. Um, and one thing I'd like to mention, I don't know how many of you are here. Uh, it looks like about five of you are still here. Uh, if you haven't already followed me on Twitch, please do. Um, you know, I don't have like the, <laughs> the desires or anything to like be a professional streamer, um, but followers certainly do help. 
Um, they do help me unlock certain things that would be good for me. So it helps me support my creative endeavors. You know, my goal at the end of all of this is to really be able to make a living off of my fashion and my art. And I can unfortunately only do that um, if I make money off of it. So <laughs> that pesky thing, you know, money. Oh, and also speaking of my Kickstarter, I realize I didn't, or Character Chronicle, I do have a Kickstarter for that going on. It's just another week and a half and then it's it's done. Um, God, that means, geez, we're in the middle of June. Ah! <laughs> so um, it ends at the end of June. And um, yeah, so the Kickstarter is for the Character Chronicle and we are blasting through. Um, we've already been funded and now all we're doing is getting those stretch goals. So um, we've blasted past the first stretch goal. I do need to do an update on that um, with the beautiful filigrees that I've designed for it, for that level. Um, and then we're headed towards more, more stretch goals. So um, I think the next one is 3,500. And I think we're actually very, very close. Um, yeah, when I can unlock subscriptions once I have, I think, 50 followers. Um, yeah, so Amazon Prime, you can actually subscribe to my channel for free, um, but you do have to do it each month. Um, that's something that I forgot <laughs> when I followed a certain um, stream called Critical Role, which is one of my favorite shows about D&D &D and the Mighty Nine, there it's, ugh, I love it. It's a good show, um, but I forgot. And so I ended up starting to pay for it and which I don't mind. I love giving them money. Oh, come on. Okay, so the skirt portion is done. Yay. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is show that part now. Um, cool. So I think what I'm going to do at this point, um, I'm going to focus in on the bodice. Now, what I want to do I think what I'm going to do is actually create a little bit of a pattern here. Um, what layer? I want to do this one. We'll do it on this one. Um, so the joy of procreate is I can create a polygon or a shape. And if I hold, it'll actually kind of make it a regular shape. Oops. So you'll notice like I could do a triangle and it'll make it like a really, well, that's not a triangle, that's a, <laughs> a polygon. Um, so I can actually change that, but we're doing circles. So, or ellipses, I guess. Oops. It's so one thing if I nudge my pencil that I'm working on in just the right way, I actually can turn on my eraser, which is convenient in some cases, but less convenient in others. Um, Yeah, we'll have the, those go right up to the edge. And if I don't like all of this, 
that's fine. The worst that I'll have to do is just erase all of them. All right, so. I am going to pull this kind of scarlet or crimson color here. And we're going to see how this looks. Normally, I do not love red and green together. Um, ooh, no. Okay. How am I going to do that? Nope. Okay, undo. Um, that should have worked. So I guess what that means is we're just going to I don't hate Christmas. Um, I just don't want this to be Christmassy. <laughs> Um, the other thing about it is I have red, green colorblindness. Um, and so certain shades of red and certain say, shades of green actually, um, cause my, my brain to have some, <laughs> um, issues where it actually makes the, my eyes work really, really hard. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a little bit difficult, um, for me at least that sometimes the, the red fights for attention against the green. Oh, yeah, I don't know if I like that together. What do we think in the chat? And the problem with my, my colorblind glasses, um, is they don't really work on, on screens. I mean, they do, but like, yeah, yeah, I agree. So I don't know. I think I'll take that off. Um, yeah, especially from far away. I think that just looks funny. So we'll just get, let's get rid of those up to a certain point. Um, okay. So what we can do is the line art up here. I'm actually just going to do it along the edge up here. Because I think that'll be a nice, oops, turn that off. <laughs> um, yeah, oh yeah, Adventurous Pack. The, what about the red being just on top of the strap area? That's, that's exactly what I'm doing. So um, I'm gonna basically just do it on the straps and along the neckline of the bodice. And again, this is something that could be done with embroidery. Or if I really wanted to do, it'd be cool to do like gemstones or something. Something with a little bit of shimmer. Yeah, I think that's... That's much better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Um, and then maybe we will only get the one done today. That's fine. Um, cause it's already, I've already been streaming for about an hour. Um, I'll, I'm going to finish this one. So whenever I finish, I'll, I'll come back and we can chat for a little bit and then I'll end this stream. But, um, I don't think we have time to start a new one. I'll just tease that one and then do that on my own. So one thing I like to do 
is hats. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do on this one is not use the eraser. Um, go back to my line art layer. And we are going to give her like an ascot gavot hat um, and then for her hair which yeah we're gonna do a different layer for the hair something like oh you already have an ear so go behind. Cool, cool, cool. And now we can go back to this layer. And I do like this this red. However, I'm just going to deepen it a little bit. Ooh, wrong. use this fill layer. Oop. Also wrong. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There we go. Um, great. And now the hair layer. Let's go with something in that range. Of course. So what I just did there was I merged um, the, the body layer down, or the hair layer down with the body layer, because then I should be able to... Ooh, apparently not. Where am I? So I'm adding a layer above this, and I'm going to turn this into a reference layer. And I need to make sure that I'm on that layer. Oh, shoot. Okay. 
So this layer, <laughs> I need to change the opacity back up. Um, there we go. Much easier to see now. Um, and I'm actually just going to delete that one. We're going to keep our hair kind of short. Uh, I'm into that, so. But I still need a new layer. Cool. And, of course, we're going to go with that deep scarlet again here. Again, wrong layer. Always the wrong layer. Turn this back into a reference layer. There we go. Nice. All right. So now I am going to just kind of Undress her a little bit. Um, oh no! That's fine. Um, all right, and I guess we'll kind of go with a maybe a peachy tone for her. That's all. Go back to her. Right. And I don't draw shoes on my models like ever. <laughs> um, so I won't be I won't be starting now. Um, however, but what's a good timing now is to do some shading. So for shading, I like to go to airbrushing and use the soft airbrushing tool. And you can tell it's very, 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 very light. So I just like to go anywhere that could potentially be seen um, and add. So like here, there'd be quite a bit. Ooh, did I do this on the wrong layer? Ugh, I did. Okay. Huh. Let's, let's be careful there. Because uh, I actually need to do a new layer, otherwise I'm going to smudge my line art. And I need to make sure that this is a reference. See, I just, I talk to myself out loud anyway, so I might as well be talking to you guys, right? And that changed. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it's also, it's one of my goals um, to do more proper representation in my fashion sketches. So, um, you know, I don't usually stick to one color palette as far as skin color and hair color and hairstyles, body type, body size. Um, I know a lot of these poses for fashion illustration from Fashionary are your traditional um, fashion sketch size. I think it's either a, a 10 head or an 11 head croquis. Um, however, I, you know, I like to use the, like the plus size one. Um, and once I get a little bit more confident with creating my own croquis again, then I will be doing more, more with that. So, oh, I did it again, guys. I need to be in this layer. <laughs> uh, see, you get to see me struggle um, and, and fail on camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fine. I'm used to it. Okay. Great. 
So let's let's try all this again. So this side of the face would be in the shade a little bit, uh, maybe under the lip. The eyes would be, and then of course underneath the chin and along the neck. So when you're thinking about source lighting, um, you want to know where the light is coming from. So if it's coming from, oops. If the light is coming from this angle, then you want to make sure that shadows fall on the other side of the body. Um, this is kind of like slightly above um, and maybe like more from this direction. So, you know, the, the shadows are going to fall a little bit differently um, than depending on where you have it. Um, you don't have to necessarily, oops, let's not use that color. Um, you don't have to shade. However, I think it looks better if there's a little bit of shading. Um, and I know I'm shading underneath her clothes right now, but what this allows me to do is think about what's going on with her body first, and then I'll be able to move to the clothes. So this helps add a little bit of dimension. Um, you know, again, like near her collarbones are probably a good place. This will be completely covered down here. However, I'll still shade that. We'll bring that across. So like anywhere there's a dip or an edge, that's where I'm going to shade. And this is by no means the finished shading, by the way. Oops. So I get down, basically I block it out first. Um, and then I'll go in with another tool to smudge. Okay, and then of course the kneecaps. Although I kind of gave her strange kneecaps there. <laughs> and this one over here, so this foot um, or leg is slightly behind the other. So I'm definitely going to shade that a little bit more than the other one. And then I use the smudging tool and I just get in there. Um, oops, that's small. Yeah. And what this does, it just softens that shading quite a bit. So I just like wiggle around. Anywhere that there's like a transition between one color and another. I shade, or I, um, I smudge. And that just diffuses that color out a little bit and makes it look a little bit more natural. And again, this is art at the end of the day. So again, I don't need it to be perfect. I just need it to be representative. So you can see how much that already softens everything. And when we zoom back out, it'll be even more apparent.
Also, I don't think that Twitch is going to mind that I have, like, a nearly nude woman on here. I mean, nothing's showing, but... <laughs> I've never thought about that part of it. You kind of become desensitized to that when you do a lot of sketches. She'll be mostly clothed soon. Okay, I'm just gonna increase that a little bit. Sometimes I find like the brush is giving me too much texture and I, I just want shading. I don't want, I don't want too much texture, so. Especially on some of these areas, like you just don't need that much work um gosh like look look how much that changed on the arms nice um just softens everything makes it look so nice and then of course oops too far the neck face the lips <laughs> You could almost do a form-fitting pantsuit type of thing. Oh yeah, that would be so cool. That would be groovy, groovy, groovy. Okay, Twitch isn't as terrified as YouTube. I should be okay. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I'd hate to be like banned on the first first live stream. Um, okay, great. So I am. Oh, do I need to? Do... No, the hair is not on the slayer. The hair is on the slayer. Um, so I am going to do the hair as well. Um, and then again, I just basically choose a color that's slightly darker. Um, and then of course she's wearing a hat. So I'll go ahead and shade this top portion quite a bit. And of course I'm just using this like cropped hairstyle that she has. Um, and we'll just soften, Oops. we'll soften that smudge. And then the other thing I am going to do is basically give her a little bit of a highlight here without making that look too much like a bald spot. Okay, so I no longer need this to be a reference and I can bring it above to where it needs to be. So you can see now how, how different that is. Um, now it's time to basically bring it all together. And what I get to do now is do the hat. And this is a cool, oops. Layered hat. And actually for the hat, I might leave these shadings a little bit more harsh. That way it shows a little bit more definition, essentially. Okay. And I'm actually looking and I can see this could be even a little bit darker.
Great, so now we can shade the green. I need to adjust my brush size. And one thing of note, um, I haven't rendered any like wrinkles or anything in this fabric because it is so form fitting. Um, now that's also something that I'm trying to, to get better at doing. Um, so that's something that you'll probably see me try to do in future episodes of this. I'm not going to bother shading the skirt portion of this because it's just, what's the point? Um, <laughs> what is the point? It's really, really hard to shade anything on that layer. I guess I could try with this darker. But it's already so light. Um, yeah, I guess that works a little bit. And then this is actually a great time. You can see her legs. So you see like we didn't lose any of the color or the shading from her legs at all. Okay. Um, so now back to this layer though. It's time for the smudgy smudge. Ooh. Oh, I put the details on that layer. That's fine. I just, I won't go up towards the top there. Okay, just gonna... All right, so there's that. And I thought it would be fantastic to do this like really dark green for the background. So. Right here, I'm gonna add a layer above that. Say goodbye to the bug. This is where we get to have fun. Uh, <laughs> so where's my organic one? Yeah, let's do, let's do paper daisies. And then what we'll do is go Do a light orange or a peach. Ooh, I could do that. Let's try. I did like the green, um, but <laughs> let's do. That one. Yeah, let's we'll try that one. And in that case, I might change the, the brush. Where's my organic? Let's do that one. She kind of gets lost in that orange. Let's do maybe a more
you know, I'm gonna go back to the green. Oh, wrong, wrong button, wrong button. Also wrong button. <laughs> okay. Um, one thing that I can do though is if I want to make her stand out, I could drop the opacity, but I don't mind the the intensity there. Um, and then it's just time to rewrite. Oops, done. Cool. Great. So that that um, is the sketch for today. <laughs> I didn't realize that was going to be like an hour and a half of me sketching, but um, yeah. So this is what to expect on Fridays at two p.m. Pacific time. Um, of course, you can see my hair is all <laughs> messed up now. Um, it's what happens when I uh, start to get really into my work. So this is. This is the green lace wing. And yeah, so let's see, we had the golden orb weaver, the black widow, praying mantis I saw in there. Um, anything else? Um, yeah, so I'll make sure that I put those on my list of things to do. And um, We'll do that. And then the next one that's on my list to do is actually this one. So this is the ironclad beetle. And how I picked this one out <laughs> is actually I have a, a field guide from the National Audubon Society for North American insects and spiders. So um, I randomly flipped through the pages and then rolled a d6 because there's three images on each each spread and this is the ironclad beetle so we'll do that one um, at some point I won't I won't stream this one I'll do that for a different we'll do a different bug next week so um, yeah maybe we'll do a we'll just choose next week what we're gonna do so uh, you all have a wonderful day and I will go back to the other one that I finished here. She's part of the, the family now, the bug family. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me for an hour and a half. Um, I'm hoping that there wasn't too much lag time or anything. I'll, again, I'll rewatch this, but hopefully next time I'll have some music playing in the background that we can listen to while I sketch. And I will see you all next Friday. Bye.